Hi, I'm Teresa Horn from Sister Hitter Strong. And I'm Sarah Torino from Torino Fitness. And this is Two Trainers Talking, a show where two trainers talk about different topics to help you get healthier, you get happier, and you get more peaceful. Because getting healthier shouldn't be complicated, more expensive, or difficult. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how to get started on your health and wellness journey. So we were talking about what to talk about for our first uh, our first T3 back in. Teresa and I, I would say, what, what do you think? How many people do we get that talk to that talk to us about like just being nervous about getting started? Like how do I? They're overwhelmed about getting started. Right. Where do I start? Um, I want this, but how do I get started? Right. Yeah. And so Teresa and I thought, well, we thought we'd just kind of maybe help you along the way of the idea. Of, I'd like to get started in moving and exercising. How do we do that? So I think the first thing that we have already out there to be helpful is the goal setting podcast or video cast, right? So the first thing that I would talk to someone about is what is your goal? And always not always most of the time the goal is i want to lose weight mm. <laughs> right and i just had this conversation yesterday and i try to be sympathetic because i understand we the goal is i want to lose weight but that goal is so oftentimes counterproductive because when we give ourselves a goal of weight loss what do we do when we are working hard, doing good things, our bodies are feeling better, we're feeling better about ourselves, and the scale doesn't move. Mm. Does that mean that we haven't reached our goal? If our goal is weight loss, then we haven't. So let's reframe that question and have a goal that is health, fitness related, go towards that goal, and the weight takes care of itself. Right. So that goal is really an important part of that overall picture. Yeah, so check out that episode for sure, because um, I think knowing your why um, will direct your actions. And so once you understand um, this is what I want, and then you can figure out how to map your way there. And so, for example, if you say another one I hear quite a bit, Teresa, I'm sure you do too, is I just want to get in shape. Like, what does that mean? What does that look like for you? And it's kind of this nebulous, um, it, there's no specificity to it. It's kind of, so, so what our goal setting uh, podcast will ask you is to get kind of specific about what your goals are. And your actions will then lead you towards what your reaching whatever your goal is. So that's where we would tell you to start. That being said, we have some ideas because we're trainers and because we have most of the people come to us approximately with some of the same variations of, of desire. We have some ideas for helping you just get started. Right, absolutely. And the first thing that I would say is try moving more. Just increase the movement that you're already doing. I was thinking today, I should make up a cute little meme that's something like, always take the stairs, <laughs> you know, because that's very easy and something everyone can do is to try to take the stairs, you know. Uh, park, park far the away. There it is. <laughs> but we can do that. And once, if we do it all the time, we create this consistency. And that's what we want, things that we attach habits, um, attach actions to habits we already have. You're already gonna go up a flight of stairs or go up the elevator, attach walking the stairs. You're already gonna park your car, attach parking farther away. And it just becomes a habit. And once we establish a new habit, you know, you just do it. So you're always getting more steps in. So taking the stairs, parking farther away, uh, take a walk after dinner or walk during your lunch break. Just increase the movement you're already doing. Exactly. Okay. Add, think, think about it in terms of natural movement. What, what do I like to do? Do I like to dance? Then I'll 
put on ABBA in the kitchen. I'm a little embarrassed, but I will say that. And well, I'll be chopping vegetables, getting dinner ready, but I'll be dancing around my kitchen. It's just a way to naturally move. Um, so what can you do to add some more natural movement into your life? Gardening is another good oh, one, good one. Uh, you know, and it's really good exercise, but you know, that's something that people, you know, naturally like to do. Just try to, you know, do a little more, or be a little active, more active when you're doing your gardening or whatever else, natural movement. So that would be the first thing is that, that we would probably put on the list for people is, is look, seek out ways to just move more naturally. But then we would probably add on to that, that it, it's time to start thinking about more formal exercise and how that looks for each person is going to look a little different, right? Absolutely. For some people, that's going to be a class, um, a membership somewhere. It might be uh, exercise types in your basement, um, running, walking you want to try to build on something you already like to do. You don't necessarily want to uh, do something you hate <laughs> because it want, you want it to be something you enjoy, therefore you'll continue. So just think about what types of exercise do I enjoy and try to seek out some different things. Do something that you enjoy. And I think the reason why is because there's already such load around exercise. Like as soon as you say the word exercise or uh, working out, there's already such load attached to it because there's a have to or a should attached to those words. Like, oh, I have to work out or I have to, you know, exercise more. And so right away, that two-year-old in each of us is like, uh -uh. I don't want to. <laughs> Exactly. So if it can be less loaded and made more fun, then great. So that means dis determining, are you someone that likes group fitness? Do, both Teresa and I teach group fitness classes. Um, and there's, there, what, are the, what do you think the benefits are to group fitness, Teresa? Well, for I see the benefit is everyone has a common goal of fitness and exercise. So you kind of get this momentum of everyone working together. And I see in my classes, people encouraging each other and um, being there for each other, sweating together, they're working together. So there's a positive momentum of we're in this together, we're, we're you know, doing this together. So that, that's the major benefit I see. Um, what are some of the things that you see in your fitness classes? I think, yeah, camaraderie is awesome and support from your fellow worker outers, but also you get a pair of eyeballs on you from a coach. And so Teresa and I would be like, oh, um, here's some ideas about how to squat better. You know, we get, you have, get a pair of eyeballs on you and, and that can help. Also, um, they're more affordable. If you're going to do, if you're going to be doing workouts, uh, group fitness tends to be a little bit more affordable than other modalities. Um, that being said, let's move on to individual workouts. Teresa was talking about working out in your basement to a tape. Also very affordable, but it takes a special person. And by special, I mean just a special mindset of a person who can work out uh, in, individual, in an individual way. Don't you think, Teresa? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, you have to be dedicated to do that alone because there's no, there's nobody else looking for you to be there. You know, one thing about group fitness is once you've gone a couple of times, people are looking for you, right? They're looking for you to be there. Nobody's looking for you to show up in your basement. And that doesn't mean you can't do it. That just means you need to be committed to show up for yourself, which yeah. we all we all need to show up for ourselves, but you, you really have to show up for yourself um, if you're working out alone in that way. It takes like, a, it just takes a person who's, who's really like, I'm a little more of an introvert. So I might be like, yeah, I might be all right with working out by myself. Um, right. Or someone who's like, I only have this much time. I don't want to drive to the gym and park and change and sweaty and I don't know. 
there's benefits to working out by yourself. You just have to really be focused and make sure that you can get her done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the next thing that we were going to talk about was um, hiring a trainer. I mean, is that, is that it, financially, there's a little more commitment. That being said, what I have found is when you commit more finances and focus more energy, money is just energy, but if you focus energy towards your goal, you're going to reap some fruit off of that because you're focusing your energy towards that goal. So what would you like, what do you, what do you think is the benefit of a trainer? Well, you've kind of already mentioned it with group fitness, but there are eyes on you. Not only eyes on you, but a program designed for you, right? That's the major benefit I see is, you know, a trainer's going to, um, in best case scenario, look at your movement pattern and design a program that's gonna benefit you specifically. And that's, you know, I don't know about you, but that's like my favorite part is mm -hmm. to see the variations of movement patterns that you see with clients and design a program that's really going to benefit where they are right now to help them get to their goal. So, um, you know, when, when you have um, a personal trainer, that's the, the benefit is it's not a program designed because group fitness is designed for a group. You know, it's designed to address several levels of fitness, you know, from the beginner to a more advanced. And with a personal trainer, that program is designed for you right where you are. And as you progress, the um, program will progress because that, you know, that's what it's designed for. So what do you think are some of the benefits of having a personal trainer? Oh, I, I mean, I think all, accountability is another one. If you like to, um, you know, have an appointment, I think uh, it's nice to know that, oh, there's a human that's waiting for you that has expectations for you and is uh, going to ask you about, hey, what kind of movement have you done in the past few days? You know, there's some accountability that we do as trainers that help uh, you be accountable to yourself. Um, there's more educating, there's more time to educate, I would think. And so, um, there's a lot more, both Teresa and I really ultimately want our people that come to us to be independent exercisers. And so we take, we take the time to educate you within movements so that you can take that and move out into the world on, on your own, right. um, and be an independent exerciser, which is our goal. We don't want you to hang out with us forever. Right. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I would say education and eyes on you, man. It's, if we can see, we can see uh what's happening with your body and we can help you make adjustments we see weaknesses and strengths we see um improper patterns and we can straighten those out so that you can really uh start to use the all of your muscles um right. but there you know there's drawbacks too there we're more expensive uh we're more expensive for sure and there's a commitment that maybe you don't can't honor maybe you've got little kids at home and you have a hard time negotiating a sitter and all of the things that come with having a, a trainer um right. so yeah what that being said Teresa if you were going to hire a trainer what would you look for well you know a lot of what we talked about I was thinking where we are right now in our practices we do a little bit more than training we're also kind of coaching you know so I would personally look for someone who was going to give me all those benefits, right? Because there, we have different trainers with different specialties and I would want to have uh, a, a coach who has a, a similar philosophy than I do. A coach who's not, um, who does want me to have, to be able to go on my own at some point and um, exercise alone. I, 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 to, um, say it to my husband like catch and release I really <laughs> you know I want you to be with me for a while and then I want you to release and then if you have some questions you know give me a call sometime and we can touch base uh, but I really do want people to go out and exercise for themselves we don't need to be together forever um, so I would be looking for someone who has a similar philosophy that you know about that um, someone I feel comfortable with and I feel safe with. So those are important, someone I can talk to. Mm -hmm. um, 
and someone also that I trust to push me, right? So, uh, <laughs> you know, you don't want to um, have a pushover trainer either, <laughs> you know? So, you know, I'm going to say, oh, I don't like that, but I trust my trainer enough to be like, yeah, well, I should probably still do it. So um, those are some of the things that I'm thinking of and what I look for in my coaches because I, you know, I have a coach. Um, even though I'm a coach myself, I have a coach because, you know, it's hard to push yourself beyond your comfort zone, right? So if I'm in my comfort zone, that's where it, it's comfy. <laughs> necessarily, not necessarily going to push out of that, you know? So what do you look for? What, do you, what would you look for? Well, all the things that you said, I think a good coach is a good listener. Um, I think that they listen uh, to what's happening and what's going on and can kind of help you. Uh, they hold space for you. Um, but I also think a good coach um, pushes just a little bit. I don't need to be like, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, I don't want you yelling at me. Yeah, no. <laughs> no yelling. That freaks me out. Gentle nudge, I'm good. Yeah. Or a look, just a look. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right? Totally. Yeah. But you know, I ultimately I think choosing a trainer, um, there I think there has to be kind of a, a chemistry, a chemical connection, uh, kind of a um I actually have had people where I'm like, I think you might be better served going somewhere else not because of any other reason but i think you know once you come up with someone who's like i'm financially stressed i'm well maybe then a trainer isn't the way for you so let's find you some other options that are better that's a good train i think that's a good trainer that's like listens to all of it and then is willing to say i think there might be some better ways for you to to do this Absolutely. versus yeah, sign on the dotted line, you know, for three months, for twice a week. Yeah. Yeah, I just had that conversation yesterday because we want you to be fit and healthy. And if I am a part of that equation, great. But if I'm not, I still want that for you. So, totally. you know, let's, let's get you there. And if I'm a part, great. And if I'm not, I still want you to get there. Exactly. That's, I mean, I just feel like that's, that's good stuff right there. I got chills. Yeah. That being said, I, I did want to touch in on affordability because one of the things Teresa and I, when we started this, was we really wanted to help make this not so complicated. And so what you need, I think what, what you need to think about is what can you reasonably do? What would serve your highest good? What can you afford? Um, and I think one of the things that we talked about before was how can you be consistent? Because Teresa, you've said it before so beautifully, consistency is key. It is. Yeah. Yeah. We have to put in the time if we want change, you know, and that's, and that's a really, it kind of feeds into the money. Um, you know, money holds the, you know, commitment. So, you know, it might be tight, but if we're committed, when we put, I mean, I don't know, for me, when I put money on the table, <laughs> there's a different level of commitment because, you know, that's, that's energy and that's, and I want to use that wisely. So a lot of times that is just a hurdle we have to get over, you know, it's a mental block. So, you know, if we're hesitating to put the money on the table, it's, often not about the money it's about the i know if this money goes down i am committed and that's and that's the hard part right that's it right yeah that's it so yeah so but do let's talk about affordability like both Teresa and i teach classes that are affordable drop in rate on average of about eight to ten dollars depending on your commitment level if you pay up front or but there's like community uh ed classes that you can take that are super affordable. There's uh, community fitness classes often in parks um, that you can drop in and pay a, a little, you know, not as much. 
Um, what, are, what other ones can you think of? Are the studio I teach at for yoga is it's donation based. So you can come in and pay what you can afford, which lines up with my values, which feels really good for me. What about you? Do you do, what kind of stuff have you seen? So yeah, at our community centers and um, maybe even your hospital might have a community exercise program that they run uh, and specials, right? You can shop around for specials on Groupon and at certain times of the year, um, places run different specials. So that's another good option. Or if you wanna get together with friends, you might be able to, if you, you know, show up with four people who are going to do a class, um, you might be able to get a discount because you're a group. So yeah, those are some ideas. And I'm sure, you know, YouTube, the internet, just type Pinterest, you know, you go on and you type in workouts and boy, well, you're going to end up with a lot of ideas um, to how, how, and how to move. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're doing that kind of piecemeal, you know, um, putting it together yourself, one thing to do is to, and I always have people do is write down their plan, mm -hmm. you know, um, because if you're going from the rec center to um, the park, it can kind of seem scattered and it's easier to drop the ball and be like, well, I'm not going to go to the park today. But if you write it out, I'm going to do the park on Tuesday and I'm going to do the rec center on Thursday, you're more apt to stay committed totally it turns in it turns from oh i'm going to go work out into an appointment i think right. it, there's a subtle subconscious um oh it's an appointment and i got my bag packed and it's in my car and i'm gonna you know so then it turns it just adds a little bit more commitment to the actual doing of the thing right absolutely yeah. like i actually have to put the abba cd into the player <laughs> 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 well, um, we are so grateful that you all joined us today. Teresa, do you have any last words of wisdom? I don't. I just will take the first step. You know, you know, we just have to begin. And it's it's great. The water's fine. <laughs> Promise. Yeah. Well, I I think um we have lots of fun uh, ideas coming up and, and maybe one of them will be to talk about different ways to move um, and hopefully uh, maybe we could include some workouts, Teresa, what do you think? That sounds great. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you all for joining us today. We're super glad you did.